Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, David Madison the Guardian. I'm the Guardian. So in this video, I'm going to move this kind of heavy, heavy dumpster door. It's made out of metal. Uh, the pin right now is not touching the ground, which helps. So when you focus, you need a blend. First of all, you need to build up what in inner alchemy are called energetic truths. So you have to get to the point, and maybe you do this little by little, but you have to get to the point that you believe that at least the wind can move this back and forth. And you have to get to the belief that you can affect a difference in the wind. Maybe you don't have complete control, but you have, but you can exert your energy and the wind starts doing crazy things. Okay. Another thing you need to believe is that there is energy in your body and that this energy resonates it goes out from your body there's a field around your body of electromagnetism not only that but you know the aura is made up of electromagnetism but it's also made up of the different shells of the chakras right it's also probably kundalini stuff and other stuff and uh, the merkaba or merkaba right all this stuff is like in your aura and some of it extends outside of your aura but through your thoughts and emotions and your feeling impressions you can affect your energy and your energy can then change and affect other things around you. This is the, the core understanding of psychokinesis. In telekinesis, it's just you influence things with your mind, but with psychokinesis, there's this idea of the energy. Okay, so... Now, I couldn't have predicted that, that that was going to happen, okay? And I don't have a string that I'm pulling on. Like, if I spin around, this door isn't moving, okay? I don't see any magnets. There's no magnets on my hand. Uh, it's simply extending your intention out. I mean, there's much more than that, but think about this. Think that the world is not the world as you know it, but it's kind of like a computer program. And your intention is like code that you're interjecting into the program. So you can make this move back and forth. It doesn't just need to go one direction. All right. You can oscillate the energy, basically. So when you first start out, maybe you realize that the wind blows something one direction and it keeps blowing it one direction. And then you come back to it another day and it blows it the other direction, right? And you just seem to have no control over that. Congratulations, you're a beginner in telekinesis. Um, this is what we all face, I'm pretty certain. And...
there's beauty in this confusion of not knowing what's going to happen, of not being able to control it. By the way, I experienced the same kind of confusion in another more physical type of activity called contact juggling. So in contact juggling, you take a ball, different sizes, okay? Doesn't matter what size. Bigger is better when you're starting out. And you try to move your arm under the ball so that the ball rolls on your arm. And eventually you can turn your, turn your arm over and get, it, get the ball to kind of roll this way so that it rolls onto your forearm, right? And eventually you can, you can do it all over at least the top of your body, right? So you can roll it onto your neck the back of your shoulders, your back, your, uh, your bicep, your tricep. You roll it onto the other side of the body, onto your chest, your stomach. And those are really, really good. You can even roll it down their legs and back up again. And so this, at first, when you're trying to learn how to control this thing, If you get mad, you get frustrated, and you try to control it right away, what happens is it doesn't work very well. So what the first stage of this is trying to sense where it wants to go, and then putting yourself right where it wants to go. Okay, this is a listening. In martial arts, this is called ting, right? When you have an opponent or you have another person in front of you. Ting is that sensitivity. Like Bruce Lee had ting in spades, guys. He would actually sense where someone was going to attack next. Ninjas can do this. In ninjutsu, this is something that they train extensively. But anybody can do it, okay? You can sense in small increments of time where something is about to happen. And you can stretch that, that span of time to longer and longer until it, it goes out to years, okay? And then that's like psychic ability. So you trip over from kind of the mental uh, calculus that goes on in your head where you're weighing probabilities and you get really good and combine your intuition with, with like millions upon billions of calculations that you're doing every second or whatever and eventually you get so good at that that it it, it leads into psychism okay so with telekinesis you're actually dealing with psychism and with contact juggling, you're dealing with the calculus of your body, but eventually as well, psychism. And like I said, in the beginning with contact juggling, what you're trying to do is you're trying to anticipate, be in the present moment, but sense where the ball wants to go next, and then place yourself in the path of that. If you try to control it too early, then you get shaky, right? And it's constantly falling down. And it, it does in the beginning. But you just practice by taking the ball and shifting the ball slightly so that it moves maybe into your fingers. And you roll your hand back. You pull your hand back and the ball, if, you, if you're leaning down a little bit, then the ball with gravity wants to travel down your fingers. And then if you make a motion like this, the ball will turn, it will start to roll up your, your arm. So you wanna practice in small little sections and then feel the weight of the ball. Maybe as it's rolling, it, it starts feeling like it wants to go this way. So 
if you continue to move this way, you're gonna push it off your hand. Unless you can speed up really fast, then you can kind of glue the ball to your hand with centripetal force. Okay, but that's another thing entirely. That's when you're learning about control and magnetism and stuff. But at first, all you're trying to do is turn your hand a little bit like this and sink your weight a little bit so that the ball, as it's moving this way, settles into the center of your hand again. Okay? With telekinesis, of moving objects, heavier and heavier objects over time. It's the same kind of, where is it gonna be next? You're not necessarily trying to control it. You're just trying to introduce change into the environment. And as you get better and better, as you step, like as I'm walking, I can feel currents of energy. It feels like wind. You know, as you get better and better, it may feel like magnetism. It may feel like heat. Okay. But like, all this stuff, you train little by little by little. And you're building up your belief structure because if you don't believe that wind can move this door some people don't they're like well the door is so heavy like maybe it's not this door maybe it's uh maybe it's a. Uh, maybe if this were a concrete door right and it was this thick you might say to yourself well it's it's so heavy wind can't move it but I got, I got news for you guys. A tornado can rip a tree out of the ground. I've seen it happen. Or at least I've, I've seen the aftermath of that in my own yard back when I was living in Virginia. A hurricane is even more ferocious. It can do even more damage. And a hurricane is like a mixture of air and water. So it's got more density to the air. But there's basically nothing that air cannot move. And once you understand this, you'll realize the power that's inherent in getting good with aerokinesis, with air bending. It really all starts, I believe, with air bending. It, I mean, it starts with the mind and tin foil or something like that, even indoors. But when you want to get the real, real powerful effects, right? You want to get the things that, that just boggle the freaking mind. Like, for instance, you're sitting in a car, right? You can cause the car to shake back and forth by varying the wind speed right and changing the wind and direction and everything along the car and the car will start to shake i've done this with the truck that i was in at at the time it was a moving truck it was a you know a 16 foot length moving truck so once you realize that all this is possible, then you can start to play with it. And the real power starts to come when you forget that you're an adult. Like I'm 42 years old, guys. I'm an adult. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, I'm an adult and, but I treat life, at times I treat it seriously, but for the most part, I treat life, guys, like I'm a 12-year-old kid or maybe an 8-year-old, 7-year-old kid just learning, having fun. And your power...
power. If you look at all the masters throughout history, the grand masters throughout history, you will realize that they had one thing in common, if nothing else, and that was their sense of play. You don't continue doing something you don't like or something that's just real, real serious. Like, yeah, you can go to a job for 40 years, but the master, it's more than a job to this master, to this grand master. It is something that they spend hours upon hours every single day of their life on. That's why they're so good. And what makes them willing to spend that time? What makes them willing to spend that time is they get a sense of satisfaction. It's a sense of fun and excitement. And if you don't have that, you're not going to attain mastery. I don't care who you are. You just, you're not going to do it. So again, the number one, more than anything else I can think of for a master is their ability to become childlike in every moment. And when you meet up with the master, you experience that. You experience like this. Yes, there's definitely a seriousness and a badassness about them. It doesn't matter what they're doing. Maybe they're a master at juggling, okay? There's a sense of badassery about that person. It's because they understand the fundamentals of the universe in a microcosmic way with relation to whatever craft they've picked. But whoever masters that a side of themselves or subject, and there's no such thing as complete mastery, but whoever, when I say masters, gets to a high enough level that science and art kind of mix together and becomes kind of like music, right? Becomes just this artistic expression this mystical, magical expression where they're no longer doing so much as they're being. This, my friends, is mastery and it comes with practice. And that practice gets easier and easier with consistency with intelligent practice, but most importantly, with a sense of play, a sense of curiosity, a sense of excitement and wonder and awe and gratitude and all these things that seem like, eh, they're just emotions, you know? So what? You know, you gotta be logical. You, you think about, think about these people who Eh, we'll go into that another time, guys. So, if you liked the video, if you found it useful, inspiring, entertaining, uh, maybe just thought-provoking, give it a like, share it, comment down below your own experiences with mastery or with any of the topics in this video, or ask a question, and then click on that bell notification so that you can be alerted to when more of these videos are uploaded. And guys, I upload a video at least once a week, but I try to upload a video about once per day. So in two years, at 365, call it 350, that's at least, at the very least, 700 videos I'll have up on my channel in one year from now. And you can do the same thing if you're a content creator uploading one thing per day in one year actually that would be two in two years that would be 700 in one year it'd be like 365 right but if you do two videos per day then it's then it climbs to 700 and if you do three videos today you're sitting over a thousand 
So in one year, you can have over a thousand videos just by uploading free videos per day. Of course, you gotta be consistent, but you know, if you love it, you will. Okay, guys, peace, love, and light. Be well and take care.